Hello, my friends. Welcome, welcome back. Um, we are going to work on this lovely lady's hair today. She is by an Instagram artist that goes by um, 007.uv, or also known as Walter's mom. <laughs> she has a really cute um, cat named Walter that um, she talks about a lot on her on her Instagram channel. But anyway, as I said in the um, in the first video where we did her skin, oh, I feel a little lump under there. Um, um, she these pages can only be found on um, her Patreon page. You can join um, for five dollars a month. You get all of her previous coloring pages, um, as well as a new page every month, and it's totally, totally worth it. Her pages are gorgeous. In case you haven't, um, in case you didn't see the first part of this video, this is one of her coloring pages that you can get, and this is one of her coloring pages that you can get. So those are the first two that I've done so far. This will be number three, and we are going to continue on and do her hair. So, um, also, as I said in the previous video, this um, was a page that I did by Lana Green, who I got a lot of requests to do a tutorial with this hair color combo and a dark, um, the dark background. So that is what we're going to do on this one. So today we're going to work on the hair. And let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to zoom in and hopefully not wind up getting out of out of frame. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start. Um, we kind of determined that the um, light source was kind of coming from head on or um, maybe a little bit above, but kind of in the center. So I'm going to put some of this um, eggshell <clears throat> around her face. It's gonna kind of be our highlight color. Maybe I can already tell I'm gonna get out of frame. Then we will do some light peach. And some of this is gonna pretty much just kind of go over and between. We're gonna cover up a lot of this with the terracotta color. I 
most, mostly focusing this in the um, center of each little um, section of the braid. Now, let me sharpen this. We're going to use terracotta. <laughs> and now I'm going to slow down a little bit. That's that first um, that first bit we did, I kind of went a little bit fast, um, mostly because uh, precision was not so necessary. But now we're getting into where we want to slow down, and be a little bit more precise with our colors. So now your terracotta is going to feather into the center of the all the hair that we just did. be adding a lot more colors. We're going to be adding henna and chestnut in here too, so I'm not so concerned about covering everything yet. Try, try and keep your strokes going in the direction that the hair is flowing. That will get you a more realistic look. I'm not going to bother putting any in there because I know that I'm, well, maybe I'll just do a little bit. I know I'm going to go darker in there. Okay, I think I might leave those little bits kind of as is for now. I want them to stand out as a highlight. I'm not sure what 
color I want to mix in there yet, so. I'm going to pull this just because that's how I am. I like my pages to go all the way to the edge. So I took pencil and kind of drew in down here. I'm not sure if I'll <clears throat> completely be able to hide that line, but I'm going to give it a shot. Let's just go ahead and continue and do the whole, let's do both sides, at this, you know, work them together at the same time. I'm trying really hard to preserve as much of that yellow highlight as I can. 
can or as makes sense because I've definitely done this before where I put that highlight down and then by the time I finished adding all the colors, it, it kind of hid the whole thing and um, it didn't have that bright glowy look that I wanted. So just keep that in mind as you're laying down your color. I'm going to sharpen my pencil. It's so much nicer to work with a sharp pencil. Okay, so let's add a little bit of henna. This is going to um, pink the hair up just slightly. Um, because it's got a lot more pinky tones than the terracotta does. And try really hard to preserve those highlights. Sometimes it's really a challenge for me because I get going and I get too rambunctious.
think you can already see the difference in the um, the tone, the color of the hair. It gets definitely gets um, less orange, I guess. I like um, I like mixing all these different kind of reds because it makes the hair I think look more realistic. Cooper thinks so too. <laughs> bit of the light peach right in here right here cuz i missed it Now there's a there's a a fine line between covering up too much of the yellow and leaving too much because obviously she's not a blonde so you want that to show but you don't want it to be not mixed with other reds out my my little comb eraser because it's really nice for when you don't want to you know push your pencil down into a you don't want to heavy sharpen you don't want to really lose any pencil but you just want to sharpen the point that was where I was going with that it just gives you that little bit of sharper edge without taking more of the pencil than you need. Alrighty, so chestnut is going to be our first um, of the darker tones. Not 
sure we even need it on this one. Part of me is tempted to just go straight for black. Or we could use espresso. So let me do a little experimenting. See how I like what the No, I think we're gonna go straight for black. Um let me see. I'm going to pull out another black pencil because this one's kind of short and It'll be easier for you guys to see what I'm doing if I have a longer pencil. Okay, so we are going to use the black in the deepest parts of I'm going to use it under here because that would be in shadow. We're going to use it under here because that would also kind of be in shadow. And I'm also wondering if I should blend first. Okay, let me just back up a minute. Don't get ahead of myself. I want to see what these colors do when I use the blender. Okay. They definitely get brighter and softer. And I really, really like that look. So let's blend before we add the black. Because I don't really want the black to blend in with what we've done. I want it to stand kind of on its own. I wonder if you can see on film what a difference that is. Film, is that even the right word anymore? <laughs> I don't think it is. Video, video. blend the other side. Yeah, well, I was going to use chestnut, but I don't think in this case I'm going to. If you're using this color combo um, with a different hair style and you feel like you need that extra layer of color chestnut is a really nice one to add i did use chestnut in the lana green page If we need to add more colors, more different colors afterwards, we will. So the black is going to go into the recessed areas of the braid. And when 
you add black, that part recedes. Not sure what I'm gonna do about those hairs. I think they're still a little bit too yellow. So we may come in and add some something. Something something. So anytime you add a kind of a V. Oh, let's do it again. I'm gonna zoom in. Let's do it right here. Anytime you add like a V shape into the hair, it takes that bit of hair <laughs> and it pushes it back into whatever it is that you're working on. And so it adds more dimension to the hair. And you can take a bit of hair that doesn't have a lot of texture to it, that the artist did more line drawing kind of stuff to it, and you can add your own um, realism and bit of texture just by just by having light bits on top and adding your dark bits either in a V or a little like like crescent shape almost And the V can go either upside down or right side up. picked up the other pencil. Isn't that funny? How weird is that? I'm used to using it, I guess. Okay. All right. I think we'll take some Terracotta, just very lightly add some streaks into that blonde. Because it was just too yellow. Just want to see what it looks like if I take the chestnut and I go over what I just did with the black.
like it. All right, so we are doing black over here. She needs some eyebrows. I should, I should say she needs some color on those eyebrows. Make sure I stay in frame. Okay. All right, I'm gonna zoom out so that I don't get out of frame. Okay, let's do the chestnut over the black. softening that black a little bit that way but it's still staying nice and dark Well, I wasn't able to completely cover up that line from where the ink was dark, but I think it's okay. I can I can live with it. All right. Now I think I want 
to take some white. And you can, as far as I know, you can only do this on these toned papers. Because if I tried to add white highlights over the top of an already colored page on white paper, it, it would not work very well. Now, if it's a super toothy paper, you probably, I guess you probably could, but it just seems to me that for me, this is the only paper that really lets me do this. All right, now I did white, but you know, I'm wondering what it would look like if I did cream instead. Because cream is pretty light. Yeah, it works. But I think not as good as the white. Well, I'm just doing a few random ones, like not, um, not full on in the center bits. I'm kind of doing like just random hairs. And then when we get the rest of the hair, not hair, the rest of the page done, I might come in with um, eggshell or white or something, and we'll do a we'll do some kind of flyaway hairs. Um, kind of like that. That was probably a little bit too bright. I think we'll probably be able to use eggshell have to darken that somehow. <laughs> uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, but I want to wait until the other um, color pencil is down so that we don't have to do it twice. So then we'll come in and kind of add some stray um, hairs. So there we go. There's our red hair. I love the way she colored or drew the braids. They're, they're just messy and lovely. Oh, let's give her her eyebrows. Terracotta chestnut. Which one should we use? Let's start with terracotta and we're going to just flick them like real hairs because I don't want to go too... I may come in with another color, I don't know. Chestnut, I don't think henna, I think henna's too gonna be too pink. I might even come in with some black. Or maybe espresso. All right, if I do this espresso, I'm doing it only on the bottom part. I'm not going all the way up. I'm not sure if that's right or not. It's not bad, though. I think it's pretty good. Black. Okay, that's it. How are we? Are we happy with the eyelashes? I just darkened a couple on the outside there. Okay, so there's our girl. And as I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it, I'm starting to go, I need some more definition of the hairs. So I'm just taking my black 
really lightly and adding some scratch, not scratch marks, but you know, the pencil's really sharp and I'm just adding some hairs, I guess. I don't know what, to, I don't know how else to, because you know, when you add the color pencil, you cover up a lot of what the artist had drawn in to start with. Sometimes it feels like it covers up too much for me, so I just added in a few more. Okay. Am I happy with this? <laughs> I don't know. This is the part where um, if I wasn't on film, I would be sitting here fiddling. I don't know, guys, part of me wants to add some espresso in here now. Maybe right here. Maybe right there needs some more terracotta. Hair is one of those things that you can just keep. I'm working on and working on. This is espresso. I think it's good. Um, on the other one that I did, I actually added some pumpkin orange. Now, granted, when we did this one, or when I did this one, um, I was really concentrating on a light source being over here. So you had that um, ability to do the light on one section of the hair and the dark on the other, which we don't really, we don't really have that option here. Um, but I did pull out the pumpkin orange. So I am going to experiment and see what happens if I like it. It kind of adds, which is interesting a brightness. Almost like the hair is gl not glowing, that's not the right word, but They added one more layer of color to her hair, which I like. Yep, there we go. Okay, I think her hair is done. Um, we're gonna have to decide what color to do this and all those beads that she's got on her on her um, neck dress thing <laughs> right there um, I'm debating on like like turquoise or teal you know some teals because those always look really nice with orange so what if we did those colors how do those look with the pinks? I kind of want to do some orangey, some orangey pinks. So 
if this was kind of similar to what her her um, roses would be. Do I like that? I don't know. This isn't really accurate to what the flowers would look like. It would be more in the pink and like that. With a little bit of... No, that's not really right either. Anyway, so they would be more like that. And we could do, yep, we could get those out completely and do yellow roses. The yellow roses would have some orange in them, kind of like, kind of like these. So we could do, oh, that's kind of a pretty color combo with the turquoise, and then we could do some turquoise on her um, scarf. Hmm. I kind of like that. Okay, well, you guys tell me, do you want to do, do you want to do pinks, kind of like this page? But then what color would we do the jewelry? I guess we could do that all in gold. We could do it like it's gold jewelry. That could be cool. Um... I don't know. Part of me really likes that, and part of me thinks that I want to do a rich, a richer. Um, maybe we go with pink and orangey roses, flowers, and we do her jewelry all in gold. That might be the plan. That could be fun. Okay, well, <laughs> if you have an opinion on that, let me know. Um, I'm not sure. I might, who knows, I might do it before the, um, before this one even um, posts. So, don't know if, if, uh, if I'll change my mind on that or not. So, all right, you guys, I'm done babbling. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. It helps my channel so much every time you guys like a video. And I really, really appreciate it. So until I see you again, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and happy coloring. Bye.